Long sequence tests hunt for bugs. Typically, they're hunting for intermittent failures that are hard to expose with traditional one test at a time techniques. The designers of long sequence tests have to write a framework for running all these tests. They have to randomize the order of the tests, randomize the parameters, and especially they have to provide code for troubleshooting the failures. If your test fails after running successfully for three days, it's going to take a lot of investigation to figure out what went wrong first. What was the failure that ultimately led to the failure that you can see? Without good diagnostics, without thorough logs and a good log analyzer, you can waste days and days on one bug. So activities involved in developing the technology of long sequence testing are often the focus of this technique. Dumb monkey testing is like state model based testing, except that the test execution program doesn't work from a verifiable state model. It just drives the program from state to state by simulating random user inputs. Testing continues until the program crashes or it fails in some other obvious way. We already looked at performance, stress, and load testing as risk-based techniques. But the test group is also going to have to focus on the technology of these techniques. And when the emphasis is on how to do something, rather than on what to do or why to do it, well, that's what I mean by activity-based work. Evaluation-based techniques rely on an oracle that you can use in automated testing. We looked at all of these oracles and many others in BBST Foundations. The oracle doesn't have to be complete. It doesn't have to be strong. It doesn't have to always be correct. It just has to be useful. It has to be specific enough that when you run a test, you can use it to decide whether the result appears to be right or wrong. If it appears to be wrong, a human can check it out. Function equivalence testing was illustrated by Hoffman's square root bug. A mathematical oracle relies on known characteristics of a mathematical function under test. A constraint check doesn't tell you what the correct result is. It just checks that the program hasn't given you something that's impossible. A self-verifying oracle stores its own right answer. So if you can run the test, you can check the result. Using saved results from a previous test is like a self-verifying oracle, except that saved results can become obsolete whenever the program changes. That's the cause of the maintenance problem in regression testing. Specifications are obvious oracles. They tell you what the program should do. Embedded diagnostics are diagnostics the programmers write into the program for testers to use. They look for unexpected values in internal variables. When you run the tests, the diagnostics can see problems before they turn into visible failures. This helps a lot with replicating and troubleshooting bugs. A state model predicts what the program will do, what state it will go to in response to an input or an event. You can use a state model as an oracle if you have a way to check whether the program reached the predicted state. Now we'll look at desired results. I don't really know whether to call desired results activities techniques or not. What they have in common is their goal. You do what you have to do. Usually you do the minimum that you have to do in order to certify, to sign some piece of paper, that the program meets some requirement. For example, in build verification testing, you test to certify that the program is stable enough to test. You can run demonstrations. And before that, you can test to make sure that the demonstrations will work. User acceptance tests demonstrate that the product meets contractual requirements. And certification tests demonstrate that the product conforms to a standard. So let's sum up lecture one. You should know what function tests are. You should have an idea of how to tour a program to find most of its functions. You should have a clear enough idea of this that you should be able to practice on your own to get good at it. You should also be familiar with our classification structure. For example, if someone describes a technique to you, you should be able to figure out whether it's risk-focused or not. And if it's not risk-focused, you should be able to figure out how to extend it to make it risk-focused. And if you can't extend it to make it risk-focused, you should be able to figure out what other techniques you could add so that your testing has some risk orientation in it. It might take you a while to get good at this way of thinking, but you should understand it well enough now to talk about it with someone else and to work with them to try it on the software that you're testing.